right, we're going to do something a little bit different. This is my guide. Tashi. Tashi. Yeah. Tashi's going to guide me through the dunes and hook back up with the driver and head off later. In there. on the road leaving the Nubra Valley. So today we're going to go from uh, one tense disputed area to another. So the Nubra Valley was, what well, is, um, near the Pakistani border and just a little bit that way is Siachen Glacier where the Indian Army still has quite a big presence and it was the site of some of the more recent armed conflicts between India and Pakistan. But today we're going to go upstream along the Shiok River and then over a pass to Pangong Tso, so which is Lake Pangong. And that's one of the highest saltwater lakes in the world. Now that, that's up against a disputed area with China on the border of the Aksai Chin region of China in Tibet. Pretty calm recently, but there was a war there in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s between China and India. So once again, tense, tense area. You know, this isn't exactly the most peaceful area. As much as the, the locals are, there is unfortunately bigger geopolitics at play. But for now, I think today, the most important thing is just to sit back and just, just take in where I am, enjoy this. Stop number one, Shayok village. Over here, this is where the Shayok River, over there, bends and starts heading northwards. Before that, it's got its origin in the Rima Glacier. So now we're gonna head up to Pangong. So there should be a road up to a pass and then to the lake. I had to stop at a police checkpoint, give them my passport check off our permits and onwards. Okay, that sign says we've only got 57 kilometers to go. 57 doesn't sound like a lot, but given the conditions of the roads, yeah, I think we're not even halfway there. Driving along the road, going up to the uh, Dorbuk Pass and then onwards to Lake Pangong. So this one's gonna take us up to about four, four and a half thousand meters. So having left uh, Shayok, driving up this basically this massive gorge here, which is amazing, but steep as can be on both sides. stop for some tea, a roadside stop, and everyone else is, oh, Riggs is just back there, he's refueling the car, and they're running low. These uh, roadside stops, they sell tea and they sell fuel. And basically you buy a jerry can and you buy a cup of tea. Driving through a rather large uh, army base up here in the mountains, 
you <laughs> you think it's pretty peaceful and then you realize all the trucks have uh, artillery guns on the back. Uh, doesn't seem like there's a lot of people here, so this probably is just a staging area. Nevertheless, it does it does remind you that it's not just a uh, just a mountainous area; it's also a geopolitical area. Stopping off for lunch in the town of Spangmik, which is at the, jeez, uh, I'm losing my bearings, the western, western end of Pangong. This, this part of Pangong is really popular because it was the climax scene of a famous Indian movie called The Three Idiots, where the uh, heroine rides away from her wedding in a yellow scooter along the top lake shore. So, down there, can't quite see, uh, <laughs> there's about 20 yellow scooters just lined up against the lakeshore and people are paying to get photos sitting on the scooter. Tonight we're gonna stay a bit further down the lake in a town called Man. It's a bit quieter, a bit more rugged. Once I get there, plan is afternoon, I might just check out a bit of the lake. It's quite windy at the moment, it's getting cold. Um, hopefully this weather holds though, I'll try to get some shots. Otherwise, I'm going to get up early tomorrow morning and definitely uh, catch the sunrise and go for a hike along the lake before we head back to Leh tomorrow. Not as nice a road back to Leh. I mean, it's still nice, it's just not going to be as exciting as today's road. Right, we're driving along the lakeside here. We're going to head further down, as far down as we can go. Got an overnight stay there. Staying in a Tibetan style gur, similar to the Mongolian ones, just a little bit more permanent. And if I'm lucky, this will be like my tent last night, which turned out to be a bit more than just a campsite. Now, the reason we can't go past Man is that over here is the Chinese border. And they don't want foreigners, let alone locals getting too close to that because that is also a disputed border area so everything to that side is pretty much the Aksai Chin desert of China which is the most uh, western part of Tibet uh, the Tibet autonomous region uh, actually well Tibet and Xinjiang so part of it's Xinjiang part of it's Tibet made it to Man and it is definitely just a small local village. You got everyone tending the crops over there and uh, this is my girl for the night. Let's have a look inside. Very nice actually. Looks comfy, looks warm. It's still more than I thought. I honestly God, thought I was gonna get a tent with like a carpet on the ground uh, maybe a mattress, you know, I packed my own sleeping bag because I thought, you know, it'd be just a bit roughing it and uh, I think, I think the uh, Ladakis have redefined glamping. Uh, let's have a look at the toilet. Oh my word. That, that's nicer than our toilet at home. Hot water only in the mornings. They'll bring me a bucket of hot water and the electricity gets turned on from six until 9 p.m. and dinner's at 7.30, don't be late. Now the best thing about this is, have a look at the view. Now 
now just outside my gur. I met this group of farmers cultivating their wheat. And they were super nice. They showed me how to do it. They gave me a go at it as well. Oh, hang on, gate. Anyways, so they showed me how they showed me how they um they're cutting the wheat with their sides. They uh, <laughs> they asked me to have a go, give it a go, and uh, they were kind enough to let me get some really nice shots of them at work. And if anything, it just you, you learn just how backbreaking of a job it is. But in this climate, you gotta do what you gotta do. Not everything grows here. And you're so remote, you can't really rely on uh, supplies to be trucked in every day. Anyways, off to the lake. Looks like I'm gonna have to do a bit of uh, field hopping. And I forgot my tripod. All right, for my long exposures, I'm gonna have to make a tripod with some rocks. Right, I've picked this stop here uh, on my hike along the shorefront, about uh, two kilometers from the camp. And because I forgot my tripod, I've got my makeshift tripod ready. And I'm running a triple filter set at the moment. I've got my ND8 graduated neutral density filter. And I've also got a polarizer and a 10 stop neutral density filter. So what that means is, in broad daylight, I am able to take, what have I got now? I'm running a minute and a half long exposures. And they should look like this. Got some weather coming in. Over in the mountains, a few drops of rain, so probably gotta head back soon. I thought while I'm here, gotta at least touch the lake. Holy crap, that is cold. That is cold. It's a saltwater lake, of course, so it holds its water temperature a lot colder than a freshwater one. Whew. It does freeze over in the winter, though, apparently. And funnily enough, the uh, salinity at the eastern side in China is almost nothing. So all the saline, all the salt is on this side. Even though it's dead level, this lake doesn't flow in or out. Heading back to camp now. That temperature's dropped about four or five degrees in just the last 10 minutes. That weather starting to look ominous, heading straight for us. Barometer's dropped as well, and at 4,200 meters, things can change fast. And these mountains push, push a lot over and dump a lot of moisture on the other side if you're not careful. So, we had a small rain shower earlier, but the clouds were nowhere near as big as what they are now. So, rushing back to camp. Don't really want to get caught in the rain here. Especially as it's getting just colder and colder and colder. That temperature now is 13 degrees. It has just started to rain. You can hear it on the tent. Doesn't look too promising. Well, I think that's... Uh, that's me done for the day. It's cold outside. I was planning to stay up late. Oh, it feels good. To uh, do some astrophotography. Unfortunately, that cloud cover has really set in, so that's going to be a no go. So instead, I'm going to be up at the ass crack of dawn, 5 a.m get some sunrise photos over the lake. 
guaranteed to be freezing. No hot water here, but they told me that 7 a.m. tomorrow they can uh, boil up a bucket of water, bring a bucket of water over, and I can just do another bucket shower, which I'm getting used to. Tell you what though, it's, it's a lot warmer in here than it is outside, and it's still cold in here. Don't think shorts are right for this evening. All right. See you tomorrow.